All right, folks, thanks for watching my video. Really appreciate it. I hope I make sense out of all this and that you're listening to the video and not just uh, watching closed caption because I think it's really difficult to watch what I'm going to demonstrate and try to read closed captions at the bottom of the screen. So thank you. Uh, the other day in class, I, I think it was Tuesday, we were talking about, you know, what does function notation mean? And it's going to be really important on these problems that follow down here uh, that you understand uh, whatever is inside those parentheses right there is getting substituted in for X, right? So if we, let's say, zoom in on this guy. So here's our function over here, 3X squared plus 2X minus 4. And what we're going to do is we're going to take x plus h and substitute it in wherever we see an x. So that starts looking like this. Three times there was an x right here squared and we now have x plus h squared, right? There was an x right here and now we got x plus h. So we've got to do some work with that and try to simplify it down, right? So x plus h squared is x squared, right? We're going to have that one squared. We're going to have the h squared but there's a middle term, and the middle term is found by multiplying these two together, so it's gonna be x times h, and then twice that amount. So you could put like plus 2xh, or you could have 2hx. A lot of times we put them in alphabetical order, so I'll try to squeeze 2hx, oh boy, right there. Didn't give myself enough space, did I, between the x squared and the h squared. So it's really important that you get your middle term there. Do we need the parentheses around this stuff? I think we do because we're going to distribute a 3 through that, right? We have to also distribute this 2 over here so we get 2x plus 2h, okay? Then we have a minus 4 on the end, all right? So minus 4. Okay, let's distribute the 3 through. So 3 times, <coughs> excuse me, 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times 2xh is 6hx, 6hx. Then 3 times h squared is 3h squared. Then we got plus 2x plus 2h minus 4. All right, what like terms do we have in here? Uh, <clears throat> I don't see any like terms. So we could probably just leave it like that. Uh, sometimes we might move the 2x closer to the 3x squared, right? But uh, that's probably good enough, all right? Why is that such an important problem? Well, <clears throat> right down here, we're going to do this thing called the difference quotient. And what we just calculated is this kind of like right there. We just did that part of this whole expression. So if we can do the, the first part of the numerator, which is the most difficult part, and understand that there's more to this expression, we're going to be in really good shape. Now, what the heck is this thing? Why do they call it the difference quotient? Because it's the difference between two numbers up in the numerator, and actually it's the difference between two things in the denominator as well, even though you only see one because it's simplified down to this. And it's a calculus concept. So one of the most important calculus concepts out there. We don't really need to understand it today, right? We just need to be able to do the algebra that's involved with this, okay? Now, <clears throat> it doesn't happen until problem 15, but I, I wanted to get it started in video one. I wanted to tackle kind of the most difficult problem maybe in homework first so your brain has a chance to look at it, and maybe you don't need to watch, or you know, maybe you can put the other videos on kind of fast speed, right? So I'm gonna ask you to really pay attention to this part of the video, and then, and then hopefully uh, the others will kind of fall into place, okay? So I'm going to get this one started, and then in video two, I'm going to show you the solution to it. So I was just putting a little red bubble around this part right here. That's the part that we practiced in, you know, the end of uh, day one homework on Tuesday. And so what it's saying is we're going to take x plus h, and we're going to replace x, wherever we see x in the equation, with x plus h. So my difference quotient would start looking something like this. I'm going to put a huge fraction bar down. That represents this fraction bar right there. Okay, You could put the h in the denominator if you want. 
And then I'm going to substitute x plus h in for the x right over here. And I'm going to do that in red so that it really kind of stands out. So we've got x plus h squared minus 4. Okay, so I've done the red bubble in red. This part right here, all of this stuff right here, is our f of x plus h, right? Okay, let's, uh, let's do the other part of the expression. And it's this part right here. I'll put a blue bubble around that, okay? So I've got a minus, and then I'm going to put this in parentheses because there's more than one term, you know, like it, it, there's x squared minus 4. So if I don't put it in parentheses, it would only take opposite of x squared, but we need to take the opposite of the negative 4 also because it's minus whatever the f of x function is. All right, now I know this is really abstract. I'm not, you know, showing you where this is used in calculus or why it's important. I'm just asking you to understand the algebra. So what, what am I talking about? Like what does, you know, f of x mean? Here's our function. Here's another expression that we're trying to evaluate and simplify. That's a lot, you know. Uh, give yourself a little bit of a break here. Uh, not, not uh, you know, super straightforward algebra one type stuff. So we're gonna square this, uh, you know, binomial here, and I get x squared plus two x h plus. No, you notice I just put the x in front of the h. It doesn't matter what order you put them in. This, this just felt more natural to me because it's x here and then h, so maybe it makes sense to put them in this order. And then we've got plus h squared. Maybe I should have done that in red, okay? Maybe I'll put like a little red bubble over the top. This is my f of x plus h after it's been expanded. And then we've got minus x squared minus, ooh, plus, right, plus four. We got, we're distributing that negative through here so we're going to get a plus 4. But if, if I put that as a minus 4, it's going to totally mess up my problem. Uh, that is our f of x. Come on, give me blue. And I'm going to put a little bubble above that, kind of. That's my f of x right there, or the opposite of it, I should say. That's the opposite of my f of x. And then in the denominator, we've got uh, just plain h, right? Okay, so we're looking to simplify this thing. This time, I think there are some like terms. Let me show you where those like terms are. See how the, there's an x here, that, or an x squared, that's going to go to zero with this negative x squared over here. So that's gone. And so in my uh, quotient, my difference quotient, now I, I don't have an x squared. So let's see, is there anything else in here? Oh my goodness, do you see what I left off? I left off my minus four right there. Oh no, that is really bad. Okay, so I gotta move this guy over a little bit. So I've got a minus four, and that's all part of this f of x plus h. Oh my goodness, I hope you can forgive me for that. And then we've got minus x squared plus four, okay? So there's another little piece here that's in common. See that negative four and that positive four? I want you to pause the video, finish your problem off, or don't pause it. You're going to see this in video too. Or uh, try the rest of my problem in your notes and see if you can simplify it. And then we're going to compare answers in video too. All right. Thanks for watching.